Hey Booktube, I'm back with another Victober video for you today, and this video is going to be uh, some of my favorite Victorian novels. Uh, these are in no particular order, really, except for maybe the last, like, two or three, um, but otherwise, yeah, they're really not in any particular order. These are just some of the Victorian novels that um, I really enjoy. I have by no means read um, an extensive number of Victorian novels. Um, I'm actually going to do a video on that um, later on in the month, um, sort of based off of what Katie from Books and Things did, where she counted up all of the Victorian novels she's read um, and uh, discussed like her favorites from them and everything. I'm going to do something kind of like that, and I have by no means read as many as she has, um, but I have read, you know, a reasonable-ish number, enough to have... Um, some favorites here and so I just want to go through these with you and talk a little bit about them and why I enjoy them and uh, what makes them a favorite of mine I guess um, so we're just gonna dive right on in like I said these are in no particular order just just ones that I've enjoyed so first up on this uh, favorites list, I guess, <laughs> like I said, no particular order, is Vanity Fair by Mick P. Stack William Mick P. Stackery. Um, and of course, Vanity Fair uh, is full of characters that are just over the top. Um, of course, you have Becky Sharp, who is sort of the main character, and she is not a nice person, um, and so, I don't, this novel is just a romp, um, and like it says on the back here, this is a novel without a hero, because so many of the characters in here are definitely not good characters, not good people, and so, yeah, I thoroughly en enjoyed reading this novel. Um, I just read it, like, was it last year or the year before, I think, and I just absolutely loved it. Um, the first scene actually starts with, um, uh, is it the, yeah, first scene actually starts with, I believe it's Becky, throwing a book out of a carriage. So, yeah, that, that's a fun time. But yeah, I really, really like um, Vanity Fair. And then next up is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I have it in this Word, Word Cloud Classics edition and papers. Um, so Dracula, I know that this seems to be sort of a contentious novel in terms of who loves it and who hates it and who, I don't know if there's really anybody that's in between. Uh, but I happen to really like Dracula. Um, it's one of those books that I I could read at any time because I, I like it that much. Um, and it's really very suitable for October with the, the vampires and everything. Um, of course, this follows uh, several different characters. There's Jonathan Harker, who is going to... Uh, visit this Count uh, Dracula in um, his castle and the creepy things that happen there. And then, of course, there's his sister and his um, wife. And, yeah, it's, it's very atmospheric, very dark. Um, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this novel so much. Um, I read it when I was in college, I believe, for the first time, um, and I have read it several times since. I've also watched the movie adaptations of it. Um, Netflix actually has an adaptation of Dracula on that's terrible. Don't watch that. Um, but I really like the novel, and I also really like several of the movie adaptations as well. Uh, next up on my favorite Victorian novel list is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is an industrial novel uh, that follows the character of Margaret Hale. 
Um, her family moves from the sort of idyllic south of England, um, from in the countryside to the north of England, because her father, who worked at a church in the south, um, sort of has like a crisis of consciousness. And so he moves the family to the north of England, and in the north is where all this industrialization is happening. And Margaret Hale sort of becomes um, caught up in in the plight of the workers in these industrialized factories and how they are treated. And she ends up meeting John Thornton, who is like the owner of one of these factories. And they have this very tumultuous love-hate relationship because she is sort of out to get the, the she's out to stick it to the man, essentially. Um, and John Thornton is one of those men that she's out to get because of the way they run their their factories and the way they treat their workers. And um, at the same time, she also likes him. So, yeah, this is uh, a fantastic, fantastic novel. I love the, the themes in it, the, the theme of um, sort of social justice and then Margaret Hale being this very strong woman who stands up to all these men and, you know, sticks up for what she believes in. So I just, I love this novel so much. Um, it should be read by everybody, I think, because so many of the themes in it you could even relate to today. Um, but, yeah, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell is a definite, definite favorite. And then we have a novel that I just read this year, actually, um, with Steve Donahue, and that is The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. Oh, I absolutely love this novel. I, I don't know if any other Trollope novel will ever beat this one. Um, and I haven't, I don't think, read enough Trollope yet to know for sure. But if this ever gets beat, it will have to be a pretty spectacular Trollope novel. Because I just love this. So it follows the Carberry family. And there's Lady Carberry, who is false from head to, head to foot. Um, she is a writer and not a very good one at that. And then there is her son, Felix, who is a gambler. He's terrible with money. And then there is Lady Carberry's daughter, whose name is Escaping Me. Um, I don't think it says the name of her daughter on here. But anyway, she has a daughter who um, is also unmarried and is living with her mother. Anyway, they are trying to gain money, and they think the way that they're going to do that is have Felix marry the daughter of Mr. Melmot, who is this rich, uh, horrible scandal of a man. And, uh, of course, that doesn't work out because Felix is not really in love with this girl. And the Melmot family is wretched. And Mr. Melmot, of course, doesn't approve of Felix. And then there's this whole plot line of this um, Ponzi scheme, I guess you could say, uh, for this railroad that is being set up in uh, the United States. And uh, Melmot and some of his other cronies are taking out um, shares in this railroad. But of course, once the shares reach a certain level, then they're going to sell. And this whole thing is just going to fall apart. And of course, Felix tries to get in on this. And he doesn't realize that it's it's, you know... A trap. Um, so, yeah, I just, I adore this novel so much. It is so good. And even though it's a giant tome, it, it flies by because it's, it's so full of despicable characters and so many other things as well. Um, I just really love this book. Um, definitely my favorite trollop that I've read so far. Um, so, Starting with The Way We Live Now, these last three are probably like my top favorites of um, the Victorian novels that I've read so far. Uh, so, like I said, number three would probably be The Way We Live Now. Uh, number two would have to be The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which is in this uh, Penguin Cloth Bound edition. Um, I absolutely adore this novel. I am not a huge fan of the Brontes as much as other people are, I need to reread Jane Eyre because I read that back when I was probably too young to understand it really, and I haven't ever read it since. 
Um, and then I tried to read, I believe it was Bolette, I think. And I couldn't get into that book. I was bored. But The Tenet of Wildville Hall, I, I couldn't put it down. Um, and I actually have started watching the miniseries um, from the BBC on Amazon Prime. Um, and this follows um, the character of Helen Graham, who comes to live at Wildville Hall with her son and like a, a maid or a nanny. And she has sort of this mysterious past. She's very reclusive. She's a painter. And uh, the people that she uh, is neighbors to are fascinated by her. They can't figure her out. Um, she's very protective of her little boy. Um, and so eventually you find out why she's there, what she's hiding from, why she acts the way she does. Um, and I feel like Helen Graham in this novel is another one of those characters, um, female characters that you see in some Victorian novels, who is just um, very strong-willed, very independent, um, is bound and determined to make it on her own, which is so refreshing to see. Because a lot of the time you don't see that in novels from um this era and from previous eras so i absolutely love this novel so much um and i was i'm enjoying the adaptation too i haven't watched um any more of it since i started but yeah the adaptation is really good from the bbc as well so i highly highly recommend the tenant of wildville hall definitely my favorite bronte novel um more so than the others i've read and then my all-time favorite Victorian novel, and I don't think this will ever change um, because this is pretty much locked in. It, it's been my favorite for a long time now, so I, I don't think it'll, it'll change. Um, it would have to be something pretty extraordinary for it to change, and I just don't see that being the case. Um, so anyway, uh, without further ado, that's Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Um, I've talked about Bleak House ad nauseum in the past because I love this novel so much. It follows the case of John Dice and John Dice and the wards of the court um, and how this case is just keeps going on and on and on and on and it's sucking out all the money um, that is supposed to go to the wards. Um, and so you have the character of Esther Summerson who is sort of the caretaker or the uh, nanny, I don't know how you want to say it, of um, these two orphans who are also wards of this John Dice and John Dice case. Uh, there's Richard and his sister Ada and um, they go to live at Bleak House and Esther Summerson also is um, not wanted by her mother and that plays a big role in this novel as well and it's just so atmospheric that's that's i think what i love about this novel more than anything is how atmospheric it is because i mean right from the very beginning you are sucked into that you know dirty sooty foggy london atmosphere and when i did my video ranking the dickens novels i read uh the first couple paragraphs of this that just really suck you in from the very beginning and so yeah this, that's definitely a big reason why I love this book is because of the atmos the atmospheric um that you you just are absorbed in that throughout the entire novel um and then all the different plot lines that Dickens weaves together you know the case of John Dice and John Dice and the various people um from Esther Summerson and her um, you know, mother not wanting her, and then Ada and Richard, and you know all the others that you meet along the way that are intertwined with the main characters. And then at one point, there's also a spontaneous combustion that happens, and I just oh, I can't get enough of this book. I think I've read it at least three times now um, because I love it that much. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, Bleak House is, like I said, definitely my favorite, uh, my favorite Dickens novel and also my favorite Victorian novel. And I don't think that will ever change because I just, I can't get enough of this book. Um, and every time I pick it up, like I've said in previous videos, I want to reread it. 
even though I'm currently re reading other things. And yeah, it's very problematic in that respect. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, Bleak House is definitely my all-time favorite. If you haven't read Bleak House yet and you're reading your Dickens novels for Victober, I would strongly recommend choosing this one. Yeah, it's long, but it is so, so good. Alright, so those are some of my favorite Victorian novels that I have read so far. Uh, talk to me in the comments about your favorite Victorian novels. Let me know if you've read any of these, if any of these are your favorites. Especially if you've read uh, Bleak House, Tenor of Wildfell Hall, or The Way We Live Now, um, which are definitely my top three favorites. Um, not that I don't love the rest of these also. Um, and I will be back very soon with another video. Thank you, BookTube.